Hey admins, welcome back to this month's edition of What's New for G Suite Admins. I'm Shoshana, and we'll now have new presenters covering the updates previously brought to you by Stephen and Barry. We have a lot to cover from the months of December and January, so let's dive right in. And now for our headline news. In January, we announced the new Security Center for G Suite, a tool that gives you a security dashboard and security health recommendations. The Security Center brings together security analytics, actionable insights, and best practice recommendations from Google to empower you to protect your organization, data, and users. We want to make it easy for you to take actions based on timely insights. With the Security Center, you can do things like see a snapshot of important security metrics in one unified dashboard where you can get insights into suspicious device activity, visibility into how spam and malware are targeting your users, and metrics to demonstrate security effectiveness. Stay ahead of potential threats by examining security analytics and flagging threats. Monitor the configuration of your security-related admin console settings and reduce risks by adopting security health recommendations. You can get started with the Security Center by going to the Security page in the Admin console. Click on Dashboard to get an overview of key security metrics like spam volume, email authentication, and drive sharing. Back on the security page, click on Security Health to understand how security settings are configured for your domain and get suggestions based on best practices. Let's take a look at our updates for admins. We have some updates in navigating the admin console that I'd like to show you. We'll take a look at the new navigation menu, then check out the cleaner look and feel to the app settings list page. Lastly, we'll look at the new changes in navigating admin console reports. We're launching a new side navigation menu, which will make it easier for you admins to see, find, and navigate to the information and settings in your admin console. You'll now spend less time browsing and more time doing. We've grouped menu options based on how our customers use them to create a logical, multi-layer menu. This makes the menu shorter and more scannable, helping you find things quickly. You can hover and click through the menu to drill down directly to the pages you want to see. Your delegated admins will also benefit from the new navigation menu. Now, delegated admins will only be able to see the menu items they have access to with their level of administrative privileges. This makes their menu less cluttered, streamlined, and simpler to use. Let's take a look at the changes to the app settings list page in the admin console. We're now making it easier for you to control the settings for your domain and organizational units, or OUs, within it. Navigating to Apps G Suite will now list out your domain's available G Suite core apps with a cleaner look and feel. Also on this page, you'll see a new panel on the left-hand side where you can toggle between app management at the domain or OU level. And, by the way, you'll also see that Jamboard service is on the list. That's right, Jamboard service is now a core G Suite service and will be covered under your existing G Suite agreement that offers the same technical support and service level commitments as any other core service. The admin console reports and logs make it easy to monitor your domain's Google Apps usage, measure user collaboration, examine potential security risks, and much more. We're making some changes in the admin console reports navigation to help improve the visibility of reports for specific G Suite apps. Now, let's take a look at some of the updates made by navigating to reports in the admin console. Here you'll see we made a change on the left side navigation menu. Aggregate reports has been renamed to apps. Next, we're moving all of the app specific reports previously nested under reports, aggregate reports to the left side navigation menu. These will appear beneath an expandable arrow and be organized into three subsections under reports, apps, devices, and users. All of the previous user level reports will now be nested under the users subsection of reports. This change will allow you to jump right into these reports from the main reports page in the admin console and bring a clear categorization to individual reports. Under communities report, you can find your organization's Google Plus metrics to better understand user activity and community level metrics like total members, active members, number of posts recently made, and more. We recently added some new pre-integrated SAML apps to our catalog that you will now have access to. Using SAML integrated apps, 
you and your users can use your G Suite account credentials to sign into Enterprise Cloud Apps just one time using Single Sign-On, or SSO. Single Sign-On is a great benefit for employees and teachers, streamlining the login process through eliminating effort to remember different user accounts and passwords across multiple apps. We've now added SAML integration for 20 additional apps, including Dashline, Decebo, Front, Envision, IT Glue, Pivotal Tracker, Sumo Logic, SurveyMonkey, Zoom, and Frankly, Bonusly, HelloSign, Salsify, Seeker, Small Improvements, Space IQ, Status Hub, Semantic Web Security Service, or WSS, Thousand Eyes, and Purely HR. You can use the Admin Console to set up a SAML integrated app. Let's take a look at how to do this. From the home page, click on Apps, and then click on SAML Apps. Then click the plus sign on the bottom right. In the window that appears, you can choose from the list of services that have already been configured for single sign-on. Once your organization or school has an account with that service, you can complete the setup process to activate single sign-on for that app within your domain. You can find our full list of pre-integrated apps as well as instructions for installing them in the Help Center. In addition, G Suite also supports SAML integrated apps to support user provisioning. With user provisioning, once you've set up a SAML integrated app, you can set up user provisioning to create, modify, or delete a user's identity in G Suite, and those changes are automatically made in the third-party app as well. This feature removes the extra time and effort you'll spend managing users across multiple third-party apps. We've heard a lot of positive feedback from admins for automated user provisioning that supports third-party apps, so we're adding auto-provisioning support for eight new apps, Amazon Web Services, DocuSign, Evernote, GoToMeeting, Office 365, SAP Cloud Platform Identity Authentication, Sugar, and Zendesk. Organizations or schools subscribed to G Suite Education, Business, or Enterprise Editions can enable user auto-provisioning with all supported apps. Customers on G Suite Basic, Government, or Nonprofit can configure auto-provisioning for up to three apps from the supported list. The setup and configuration of user provisioning varies from app to app. Check out the Help Center for a full list of apps to learn more about the specific setup process for each. Now, I'd like to talk about updates to protect your company's data on managed devices. We have new updates for admins to control access to company data on managed mobile devices. Using the Google Apps Device Policy app, you can enforce your organization's security policies on employees' managed Android and iOS devices from the admin console. Let's take a look at these updates that should help you and your users keep your organization's data secure. Google Mobile Management allows admins to control access to company data on managed devices directly from the admin console. With this launch, we're giving you increased power to protect your organization's data by preventing your users from syncing corporate data on jailbroken iOS devices. By having users install the Google Device Policy app, you can enable this feature in the admin console. Once the feature is turned on, users who don't have the device policy app on their device will be prompted to install it. Once installed, the app will check if the device is jailbroken regularly and notify the user if they pass or fail that check. Google's device policy app enforces your organization's security policies on employees' managed Android devices, protecting them and making them safer. If a security policy is violated, it's especially important to ensure that corporate data isn't accessible on that device until it's once again compliant. With that in mind, the Device Policy app will now disable access to non-critical apps, that's apps that aren't required for a device to function, like Gmail, for example, on any work profile or company-owned Android device that it determines as non-compliant. Users will see a notification informing them that their device violated a security policy and some apps may be disabled. Those apps will be re-enabled when their device complies with all of the organization's security policies. To keep your organization's data secure, you can enable this new security feature in the admin console for both iOS and Android devices. Let's take a look by going to Device Management from the home page, and then click on Advanced Settings, and then click on Security. From here, you can check the Block Compromised Android Devices box to block an Android device if there are any indications that it might be compromised. 
You can also check the Block Jailbroken iOS Devices box to block an iOS device if there are indications that it's jailbroken. iOS users will then be prompted to install the Google Device Policy app if it's not already installed on their device. Let's take a look at the updates in the G Suite calendar and see how this affects admins. We have a few updates for calendar, including the new calendar web UI upgrade, new calendar resources API, and shutting down the classic calendar interop tool. In October 2017, we announced a new user interface for Google Calendar on the web. To help you and your users transition to the new calendar web UI, you have several options for how to transition your users. On January 8th for rapid release domains and January 15th for scheduled release domains, we'll begin auto-upgrading users whose domains are set to the automatic or default rollout option. In this phase, users will still have the option to opt out of the new UI until February 28th, 2018, when all users will be fully upgraded. Any individual who had manually opted out of the new web UI previously will not be upgraded until February 5th. Additionally, while this opt-out phase does not impact domains whose admins have selected a manual rollout, users in these domains will still be upgraded to the new UI on February 28, 2018, with no option to opt out. With the new Google Calendar experience on the web, you have the ability to add more structured data about your buildings and resources. We're now making it easier for you to add and edit that information with updates to the existing Calendar Resources API. We're also adding two new APIs, Buildings and Features, that can be used to keep resource and building information in Google Calendar up to date and in sync with other systems used for facilities management. For more information on the Calendar Resources API, check out the Help Center article link below. In July of last year, we announced the release of the new version of the Calendar Interop tool, a tool that allows for better coexistence between G Suite and Microsoft Exchange environments, including Office 365, within your organization. As we continue to provide more features for the new Calendar Interop tool, we will be shutting down the classic version of the tool on February 28, 2018. Organizations using the classic version of the tool must switch to the new version by this date. For more information on making the switch easier, check out the Help Center article listed below. And now we'll highlight some of the updates with Gmail and how this affects admins. We have two new updates from January for Gmail that I'd like to show you. You'll now be able to delegate additional Gmail privileges to users and install Gmail add-ons for your entire domain. Managing the secure and efficient flow of emails is critical to any organization's success, but it can be a massive undertaking for a G Suite admin. To make this effort a bit easier for you, we're introducing new Gmail privileges that you can grant your, to your users without needing to give them super admin status. You'll now be able to grant a user access to Gmail's email log search feature, making it easier to track message delivery, view the impact of certain policies on email flow, and identify the IP addresses of connecting servers. You'll also be able to grant users access to the admin and restricted quarantines. This privilege gives a user the ability to allow or prohibit certain email messages from being delivered, helping to prevent spam, minimize data loss, and protect confidential information. Super admins can delegate these privileges to users by clicking Create a New Role in the Admin Roles section and then selecting Services, Gmail, and select the specific privileges from the Privileges menu. We recently launched Gmail add-ons, which allow you to work with your favorite business apps directly from Gmail. To make it even easier for your users to access these helpful tools, you can now install Gmail add-ons for your entire domain. To install an add-on for your domain, click on the Settings gear icon in Gmail and select Get Add-ons. Browse Marketplace Apps and locate an app. Click on the app to open its description page and then click Install. Then click Continue. Review the terms of service, specify if you want to make the app available for your whole domain or to a specific team or department. Check the agreement box and finally click Accept. These new features make it easier for you and your users to take advantage of Gmail add-ons and breeze through email-related action items without ever leaving Gmail. Lastly, I'd like to share with you a couple of updates for Hangouts Meet. We recently announced a few exciting additions to the Hangouts Meet suite of product and features. 
including support for up to 50 participants in a meeting. We've added nine additional countries to our list of International Hangouts Meet dial-in phone numbers for G Suite Enterprise domains. And to help you better understand Hangouts Meet usage within your domain, we're introducing more than 50 new metrics in the Reports API Consumer Usage Report. These new metrics provide details on the duration, size, and device-specific characteristics of the Meet calls across your organization. Well, that's it for this month. To stay informed, you can check out the G Suite release calendar and What's New newsletter. Save the playlist and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. And if you want to learn more about these updates, follow the links in the video description to dig deeper. This has been Shoshana with What's New for G Suite Admins, February edition. Thanks for watching.